Well, our koala population has been devastated by the bushfire crisis. Our platypus population is also suffering. The prolonged drought is drying up rivers across the country and leaving many platypuses stranded. The new research conducted by the University of New South Wales uh, and joining me live now to discuss this is Professor Richard Kingsford. Professor, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, tell me Good a little bit about uh, what the research did find. Well, thankfully, we're still a long way from extinction of platypus. But I guess our main focus was looking at what's happening to platypus right across their range from northern Queensland down to Tasmania. And we know platypus are doing quite well in some river systems, but we know that in many river systems they are declining or they're in trouble. And, and part of our research is sort of looking at what is going to happen to platypus populations over the next 50 odd years, uh, particularly as we are experiencing higher temperatures and there's much more vulnerability in terms of rivers drying up and stranding platypus in, in different parts. And, um, and there are a number of other threats that also affect them. Do we have any numbers on exactly uh, how many platypus we believe to have lost? Well, this is a very good question, Charlotte. Um, one of the big challenges with working with platypus is that we don't have as much information as we have for, say, koalas. Um, they're not easy to survey, and they also have fairly antisocial hours mm. in terms of coming out at night. So the, the sort of monitoring and research that we need to be definitive about those sort of things, we just haven't got. And there's a real opportunity to do that and to also work out you know, what are the essential ingredients of good management of rivers? So finding those rivers where they're doing well and comparing those rivers to where they're doing badly and trying to uh, essentially move the good river management across. Are there certain types of platypus that are, are more in danger than others? Uh, there's only one species of platypus. They do change in terms of their size. They get larger as you go further south. So the biggest platypus are to be found in Tasmania, but they're all one species. But I guess one of the interesting things that we're also looking at is what happens to these platypus when they're separated within a river system. And we know that building a large dam, for example, will separate platypus into those below the river, below the dam and above the dam, because they just can't get over these large dams. We're mm. pretty sure they're unable to. And we think that over time the genetics does change so they, they become separate because they're not interbreeding. So mm. there's quite a bit in terms of understanding what's going on there. So what can government do or what can uh, residents do? Is there anything that we need action on now to try and protect them? Look, I think there's lots. Um, I think one of the most important thing is we need to know more about where these platypus are and how they're doing in different river systems and there are opportunities to think about citizen science type projects where information is provided by the public. Mm. I mean we do have to be really careful about what we put in river systems. Um, lots of platypus uh, get caught up in fishing tackle and some of them drown in yabby nets, you know these opera house nets which are banned in Victoria but not in New South Wales. Uh, there are issues about where we put large dams and what impacts they might have. Um, and, and essentially, I think it's about taking better care of our river systems, uh, not just for the platypus, but obviously all the animals and plants and people that depend on those. Mm. Uh, what are, you mentioned a few of them there, but what are the main threats to the platypus? Look, the, probably the biggest threat is uh, essentially drying up of rivers and, and you know the pred predictions are which we're seeing particularly in some of the rivers in northern New South Wales that uh, rivers are drying up and once uh, a waterhole dries up and some of these haven't been dry for you know as long as people remember essentially the platypus have nowhere to go and they get stranded so um, that's a, a huge issue in a drying climate and if we're taking more water out of our rivers that's an impact. Um, so we could use environmental flows to address that. Mm. Uh, the other big issue is, is building dams because they basically fragment um, platypus populations as they do with fish. Um, and they also affect the productivity, you know, the invertebrates mm. that the platypus feed on below the dam wall. 
Um, and of course, just pollution in our waterways is, is probably the third biggest one. Well, it sounds like there's a lot for us to work on uh, and hopefully we can see some action on a few of those things to protect our platypus. But thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Professor Richard Thanks Kingsford much, from UNSW.